Yeah, I like it. A round of applause. Another sellout crowd here at G'Angelo's, eating some good food, having some good fun, and talking some good football. We're here with David Rock. Coach, uh, obviously a different scenario here than we've had in a, in a while. Uh, a tough loss to a Division II team, a team that is big, fast, strong, but still no excuses coming from Raider Nation, which I think we can all appreciate. What, what's it like in the locker room after a game like that, after the first time since 2009 losing a regular season game? That was tough. I mean, our, uh, I think our, you know, there was a lot of emotion anyways Friday night with, you know, Coach Jiggly was getting honored and, and the new stadium was being opened up. And I know it's one that our kids, the one that our staff, you know, really wanted. And I think anytime you don't get the results that you wanted, it's, it's tough. But um, I think I'm proud of how the kids handled it. You know, I think, uh, and I told him Friday night, I said, we're going to coach you just as hard as we would if we won the game. You know, I mean, it, the following day, there's nothing we can do but get better. And so we went in Saturday and tried to clean up some errors and, and get back to work. But uh, like you said, they're a good football team. And I thought we had our chances. Um, I thought we kind of let them off the hook in some ways. And, you know, at the end of the day, we, we've got to do a better, I've got to do a better job of coaching. And um, we have to do a better job of executing. And that falls on me. And um, so, but again, I think, Anytime you go through adversity, you become a better football team. And, uh, and so that's where we're at right now. I think it's really interesting. The, the, you called it a dog fight, and I, I, there's no other way to put it other than maybe a heavyweight fight because it was like watching jab, jab, jab for the entire first half. I mean, you, at, that, at halftime, it's 7-7. Seven, seven. I don't remember the last time that you guys only put seven on the board. But when you're, when you're in something like that, are, are you, I don't want to say fearful to take that first haymaker, but is it one of those situations where – you got to make sure that you, you maintain the game going into halftime with a team like that. You don't want it to get out of hand. Yeah, I mean, that's part of it. I think a lot of it, too, is just anytime you're in a battle like that, um, every play becomes so much more critical and, and every decision becomes, um, you know, more meaningful and, and probably you second guess them a little bit more. I know there's some calls that, that I made that, that I'd like to have back, you know, in hindsight. But, um, you know, again, I think anytime you're in a, in a situation like that, you got to try to do what, what you think is best for your team and what you think is, is your best option. And, um, you know, you try to try to adjust as much as you can on the fly. But, uh, again, I think, you're, I think we're better because we've been in that game. It's not, a, it's not the kind of game we're in very often, uh, but it's a, the kind of game that we have to learn how to win if we want to accomplish our end goals. I loved, I mean, and I'm, I'm one of those Madden gamers, right, so I never punt, but I loved seeing the, the faith that you had um, in your team so many times. And, and there's a lot of people, I'm sure, on the outside saying, well, they're too aggressive or this or that or the other thing. I love that you had faith in your team um, time and time again. And I know the kids, you know, the, the student athletes, the guys, they really uh, appreciated that you, you put the game back in their hands. Because, listen, there's a lot of things that can happen on special teams too that can, sure. that can go wrong. We, we've, seen, we've been on the, the good side of that right. for a long time. Um, is there a, a mindset or is there, uh, you know, a, a wristband or something that you have that, you know, if it's fourth and this, we're going to go for it in this down and distance? Or, or is it just a gut feel? You know, I think you try to take as many variables into account as possible. Um, a lot of it, I think, comes down to, to your gut, you know, and what you feel in that moment. And, um, you know, there's a couple of them that, like I said, I wish I had back. Um, you know, at the end of the day, I feel like I, I trust our guys and I trust that when we need a yard, we can get a yard and, um, you know, credit – credit to green I thought they did a really good job um, of taking away some stuff and some critical downs and uh, and like I said there was a couple couple decisions that I made that looking back um, you know again I, I wish I had back but you know I have a ton of belief in our guys and, and like you said I mean I think you know a lot of times you're trying to assess risk and, and, and see what the trade-off is and what the risk versus reward is and you try to do the best you can. I think one of the coolest things that, that I saw on Friday night was how these these fans respond, right? Yeah. It, it, the South Range way is we don't back down from anybody. Right. I don't. We, you don't care if they were D1, uh, you know, a college team, pro team, doesn't matter if they're walking in that stadium, they know they're getting the Raiders. I know that when we talk to Coach Yeagle and we talk to a lot of these coaches, the, the players embody the coach. And I love that these guys have no fear because of their fearless leader. Is that something that you, you appreciate the guys taking on? Because, listen, no matter what, Nobody backed down on Friday night. You guys played until the last whistle, yeah. uh, and, and nobody threw the white flag. Yeah, I don't. I don't. You know, it's, it's funny, but I don't ever worry about our guys backing down or or giving up, or yeah. I don't worry about that stuff. Um, they don't. They don't do that. Um, you know, we got we got beat the other night, um, and again, I think we got beat for for a lot of different reasons. But um, it certainly wasn't for a lack of effort or a lack of toughness or, or a lack of 
um, you know, embracing the challenge and stepping up to the challenge. Like I'll play them again tomorrow. I mean, I think I we left some plays out there, and, I th and, and they're a good football team, you know, and, but um, I think we left some plays out there, and I think, you know, that there's some – I just don't think we had our best stuff. And, again, I, I can't stress enough, that comes – that's my job. My job is to make sure we have our best stuff um, on a Friday night when we need it. And, um, like I said, I don't think we had it this week. So, but as far as backing down, like I said, we'll, we'll, play, them, we'll play them tomorrow if they want. I love it. Uh, you mentioned Coach Yeagley getting honored at halftime, and I know you and I talked throughout the week about how important that was to you for the guys to see that, for you to see that. Yeah. Um, what, why was that imperative that you, you come out and, and, and really take it all in? Well, I think for a lot of reasons. Number one, and would just be, you know, the, the the impact that he's had not just on me and our our coaches, but but on our kids. You know, I think sometimes people forget. You know, he he's been the head coach of these guys for three years. You know, in a lot of cases, and and, and they've all grown up around him and with him. And um, you know, I know they're so proud of him, and and I know he's so proud of them. You know, and I thought um, it was just something that you know I thought. Uh, our kids would really would really rally around you know seeing them out there and seeing them honored and I think they did you know yep. I think I think they played I think that's probably what made it hurt maybe a little bit worse you know losing was just that you know our, our kids our staff you know me personally we wanted that one really bad to do right by coach and do right by all the people that helped help build the new stadium and, and all the, the time and effort that went into that and um, so that makes it tough when you fall short but again we, we wouldn't have missed that for the world perfect segue the new stadium yeah uh, the additions the first time I got to see it was Friday morning. It is gorgeous. It, it is, is, I mean, it is the Taj Mahal of high school uh, stadiums. And, you know, you, there's colleges. And I'm sure you know this better than anybody. There's colleges that don't have stadiums as nice as that stadium. Yeah, no, it, it's a beautiful place. And uh, the one thing I like about it, um, I think the most, is obviously it's beautiful. But just the way it ties into to the rest of, of the stadium and, I think it is so fitting that they have, the, you know, the big patio out there where the community can kind of mingle because, uh, again, I think South Range football and, and Friday nights are such a special deal to our community that any time you can get, you know, an area where people can gather and mingle and spend time with each other, um, you know, I think it's very indicative of the kind of community we have and the kind of people we have. Let's turn the page. Uh, it's, uh, it's JFK week, and yeah. they're no slouch. I mean, the state runner-up last year, they were in the same position for you guys in, in week 16. Uh, a lot of adversity they're facing over there as well. A, a tough season to start for them. They're hungry. Uh, you got, I mean, to have your guys ready for a team that's looking to get back on the board uh, with a one and one record. What does that, what does that say to you? What, what are you looking for out of them with all their, I, I guess, changes, you know, uh, that they're going through some of the guys that they've had to have fill in, minimal tape on them. What, what do you look for in JFK? Well, I think it's funny because, you know, the narrative was that they were, you know, lost a bunch of guys and, and they graduated guys and, and were struggling, and, and it doesn't look like that on film. You know, they, they played a really good Garfield team last week and were, and were I thought, going toe-to-toe -to -toe with them. You know, got a couple of bad breaks in the second half, but um, and they win week one, you know, against Champion. I actually thought they looked a lot better uh, in week two than they did in week one, which is a credit to their coaching staff, a credit to their kids. But they're, uh, they're a dangerous football team. They're a good football team. You know, I, I'm not sure where their narrative came from that they weren't, but um, you, you can tell – you know, just watching the film, that they're a team that expects to win. They're a program that expects to win. Um, and I think they're executing at a really high level. I think Coach Bente is doing a great job of, of keeping his guys um, playing really, really hard and, and playing for one another. And um, they, do, they do a lot of little things right. They're great on special teams. I think they're really dangerous uh, on the perimeter offensively, and they're playing really sound defense. You can tell they're getting lined up right and playing hard. So uh, it'll be a great challenge for us again. And, you know, you're probably going to hear that from us 10 weeks in a row. It doesn't get any easier. I mean, the whole schedule is filled with teams like that. Yeah, you guys, have, I mean, it's a tough schedule from, from top to bottom. When you, when you look at JFK, that's what we're focused on right now, yeah. one week at a time. Um, what, do they, what do you see on tape? What do you see, you know, what formations, what things are you guys keying on uh, that, that you, you can hopefully exploit? Well, I'll tell you what, it's one nice thing, I think, is that, you know, you kind of go from last week seeing green that was, you know, empty and five wide and throwing it around, and, and defensively they were doing some, I think, pretty unique stuff and, and some stuff that we didn't see a lot of on film prior to that game. And then you fast forward to this week with Kennedy, and um, I think it's actually really similar to what we're trying to do offensively and defensively. So I think our kids are familiar with, with the, the, you know, the looks and, and what they're looking at, and, uh, and I'm sure the same, you know, they could say the same thing. But they're, they're really similar to us, I think, schematically. Um, and, and again, they're, and a, lot of the, a lot of the same uh, things I, in terms of identity that we do, they're trying to do. They want to work the ball on the perimeter to their, to their wide outs and, 
and they're both really good players. Uh, I know both of them, you know, through track and have seen times, and they, they can, they're burners. So they're tough out there, and then they're really big up front, and that's a challenge that, you know, as good as Green was, they weren't as heavy up front as what Kennedy is, and I think, I mean, they're really big up there, and that's going to be, you know, a whole different different challenge for us. So, um, like I said, we have our work cut out for us, and I, but I, I think our, we've had a great week of practice, and, and I hope that, you know, if one thing good comes from, from losing a game last week, I think we've had a great week, and our kids are really locked in and focused and know what kind of challenge is in front of them. We've got two guys tonight. Uh, you got Cam Carr, Blake Ewart, two guys, two seniors that are big leaders of this football team. Sure. Uh, talk about their character, what they mean to you. Oh, I mean, they're super important to our football team from a leadership perspective, uh, and they're both playing at a really high level right now. Um, you know, obviously, Blake you know, got a t was, was the bell cow last year and got a ton of time, and, um, and he's picked up right where he left off, I think. He's worked really hard in the off season uh, to develop himself physically uh, and mentally, and, and he's, you know, you'll, I'm sure you know this by now, but he's a quiet, quiet kid. A little bit. Um, but he's done an unbelievable job of leading us by example and just doing the right things. And then you look at Cam, uh, and, and Cam really was, I think, unknown to a lot of people going into this year, just because he was behind two really good seniors last year um, at tackle. But he's done a great job for us. I think uh, I could make a very strong argument that he's been our uh, our most improved offensive player over the past you know two months and throughout camp so feel really excited about about the opportunity that he's made for himself and and, and just the way he's playing so when you think about the the season ahead you guys have seven well now eight weeks right uh if you include jfk when you look at that what's the outlook right what's the bounce back factor now does does a loss make you hungrier does it change anything does it change any mentalities does it does it fire you up a little bit more, more than a, a win over Green would have? Or is it, is it same old, same old, let's keep down the path? Yes and no. I, I don't think we're any more pumped up now that we lost. I mean, we, you know, we, I, I think to our kids and to our coaches' credit, we're going out and trying to play our very best football, you know, Monday through Thursday of every week and then again on every Friday. So, I mean, I don't think to, so from that perspective. But I will say that there's an opportunity, I think, maybe a bigger opportunity when you lose to take, take a hard look at some things and, and try to assess – um, you know, are we doing this the right way or are there things that we can do better? And, and I think it's a lot easier to make changes and to make adjustments and, and to improve um, after a loss um, versus when you're winning and having success. Sometimes it's hard to change things when you're winning. And so um, I think last week is going to help us in the long run. I think we're already a better football team because of some of the changes, some of the fixes, some of the, you know, attention to detail stuff that we've improved upon. All right, last question for you. We've got to take it off the field. Uh, you and I growing up in the same generation – wrestling we loved wrestling growing up yeah i asked i asked this question to tj parker last week got to ask you the same question who was your favorite professional wrestler growing up in the rock household wow um you pr most people would probably think the rock but i, I was uh <laughs> i was a stone cold guy were you yeah i was we were wwf i think it yep. was back then so me and my brothers used to watch uh, Monday, Monday Night Raw, and I was, yep. I was a big Stone Cold guy, so I'd say Stone Cold. I love it. All right, so on the flip side of that, we got to ask, kind of localize it. If you were going in the steel cage with one coach, who would you want to go into with and, and come out with a victory? Oh, uh, on my team, you mean? On your team. I'd have to, I'd have to go with Coach Doc. I just, <laughs> you know, I feel like uh, – I feel like he's got some grizzled veteran in him, you know, and uh, he probably knows some stuff. He's been around and seen some things, so he's probably got some tricks up his sleeve. Who, on the other side of that, who would you not want to go in the steel cage with and against? Oh, I don't want to go in there against uh, Coach Taylor. Coach Levi. Taylor? Yeah, he, he does some goofy stuff. Um, I mean, I've spent a week with him and, and watched him sit in the couch during bed. He, uh, he didn't go to sleep. Didn't, I've never seen him blink. <laughs> I've never seen him sneeze. So I think he's got some stuff going on that, that would, might be intimidating for us. <laughs> You've never seen him blink? No. I've never seen him eat or drink anything other than water either. Is he a robot? That's what we're thinking. We're not sure. Taylor bot. Yeah. I like it. Coach, thank yeah, you. Thank you. I appreciate, appreciate your time. It. Enjoy yeah, the food you. tonight. Yeah, we'll do. Uh, we'll be back with Blake Ewart right here on the YSN South Range Raiders show. Back in a minute.